As of December 1, 2024, a total of 48 volcanoes are actively erupting worldwide, maintaining the same number as the previous week. Among these, Iceland's Reykjans volcano stands out as a key focal point of activity. Located just 36 kilometers southwest of Reykjavik, the nation's capital, this fissure system is now in its 12th day of its seventh eruption within the last year. While past eruptions have often raised concerns due to their proximity to infrastructure and urban areas, the current activity is relatively mild. Lava is flowing effusively away from populated regions, sparing nearby structures and critical infrastructure from damage. Authorities remain vigilant, closely monitoring the volcano for any changes that could elevate the risk level. In California, seismic activity has brought renewed attention to Mammoth Mountain, a rhyolitic volcano that has not erupted since 1252 CE. Over the course of just four hours, more than two dozen earthquakes rattled the region around the volcano. Several of these tremors were strong enough to be felt by local residents, causing concern among scientists and the public alike. While the swarm does not necessarily signal an imminent eruption, it serves as a stark reminder of the region's dynamic geology. Mammoth Mountain, part of the Long Valley Caldera system, is capable of producing highly explosive eruptions, making any uptick in seismic activity a matter of significant interest. Meanwhile, on the island of Sumatra in Indonesia, a remarkable geological event unfolded at the Dempo volcano. For the first time in recorded history, the volcano appears to have experienced a shallow magmatic intrusion. This rare event caused dramatic changes within the volcano's crater lake, leading to the near total evaporation of large sections of the lake in just a few hours. Such rapid changes suggest an influx of heat and magma from below, raising concerns about the potential for future activity. Scientists are now closely studying the event to understand its implications for the volcano's behavior moving forward. Over on Indonesia's island of Halmahera, one of the world's most active volcanoes, Dukano, made headlines by producing its tallest eruption column on record. Known for its frequent and dramatic displays of volcanic power, Dukono has been erupting almost continuously since 1933, with its typical activity characterized by frequent volcanian eruptions ejecting ash 100 to 2,000 meters above its summit. These eruptions are often interspersed with persistent emissions of volcanic gas. However, late on November 25th, a sudden and unusual shift occurred. The gas emissions ceased entirely, signaling a blockage in the volcano's magma conduit. This interruption in activity led to increasing volcanic tremors as pressure built beneath the surface. For nearly 10 hours, these tremors intensified until, at 9.43 a.m. on November 26th, the pressure was finally released in a dramatic explosion. The eruption produced a towering ash column that reached a height of 5,687 meters, 18,658 feet, marking the tallest recorded eruption in Dukano's history. Despite the scale of this event, favorable wind conditions ensured that ashfall did not impact regional settlements, sparing nearby communities from harm. This eruption serves as a testament to Dukano's formidable power and the unpredictable nature of volcanic systems. The global patterns of volcanic activity, combined with localized seismic events like those at Mammoth Mountain, and the evolving behaviors of volcanoes like Dempo and Dukono, highlight the dynamic nature of Earth's geology. These events underscore the importance of continuous monitoring and research, as they provide critical insights into the mechanisms driving volcanic and seismic activity. Mammoth Mountain, a prominent lava dome complex in California, and a favorite destination for winter sports enthusiasts, experienced an unusual series of seismic events in 2018 late November 2024. This area, typically known for its geological stability, averages less than one positive magnitude earthquake per day, most of which are too small to be felt. However, on the night of November 26th, the volcano's northwest flank became the epicenter of a seismic swarm that defied normal patterns. The activity began at 10.53 p.m with a magnitude 1.6 earthquake. Within minutes, two additional micro-earthquakes followed, marking the start of an unusual sequence. The situation escalated dramatically in the early hours of November 27th, when 16 earthquakes struck in quick succession between 12.43 a.m. and 1.11 a.m. All the quakes occurred at shallow depths, ranging from 200 meters below sea level to 250 meters below the surface at the mountain's summit. Two of these earthquakes, 
including one measuring a magnitude of 3.8, were strong enough to wake residents in the nearby town of Mammoth Lakes, sparking concern among the local population. While the seismic activity subsided shortly after this flurry of events, the pattern was highly irregular. Unlike aftershock sequences, which typically follow a predictable decay pattern, this swarm showed no such trend. Instead, it exhibited characteristics more commonly associated with hydrothermal activity, or fluid movement within the Earth's crust. Geologists studying the swarm hypothesized that it may have been triggered by melting snow, seeping into the water table beneath the mountain. This influx of water could have created pressure changes or lubrication along an unmapped fault, which might run perpendicular to two known fault lines in the area. Such a process could explain the localized nature of the swarm and its shallow depth. Importantly, the evidence suggests that this activity was likely hydrothermal rather than volcanic in origin, meaning it was not a precursor to an eruption. However, the event serves as a reminder of the complex interplay of geological forces in the region and the need for continuous monitoring. Half a world away, on the Indonesian island of Sumatra, the Dempo volcano displayed its own unusual activity. Known for its deep crater lake and relatively infrequent eruptions, Dempo erupted twice in the span of one week. On November 26th, the volcano ejected a mixture of ash and acidic water to a height of 100 meters above its crater lake, a typical display of its intermittent activity. However, what followed was anything but routine. The next day, geologists detected signs of magmatic intrusion beneath Dempo's summit, an event with no recorded precedent. Magma, which typically resides several kilometers below the surface, appeared to ascend to shallow depths directly beneath the crater lake. This sudden influx of heat caused a section of the lake to rapidly evaporate, lowering its depth by 6 meters, 19.7 feet, within just 90 minutes. This rapid evaporation alarmed volcanologists, as it indicated a significant thermal anomaly caused by the rising magma. Curiously, the activity then abruptly halted. No further evaporation occurred, and the lake stabilized, suggesting that the magma intrusion had stalled before reaching the surface. While this prevented a more dramatic eruption, the event underscored the dynamic nature of Dempo's magmatic system. The intrusion likely released heat and gases into the lake, altering its chemistry and causing localized heating. Such behavior points to a potential increase in volcanic activity, even if no eruption is imminent. Both the Mammoth Mountain Swarm and Dempo's magmatic activity highlight the unpredictable nature of Earth's geological processes. While these events are not directly connected, they serve as reminders of the complex forces at play beneath our feet. At Mammoth Mountain, the hydrothermal activity illustrates the importance of understanding how water and geological structures interact to trigger seismic activity. Meanwhile, Dempo's behavior emphasizes the need for vigilance in monitoring volcanoes that have shown new signs of unrest. Globally, these episodes also reinforce the critical role of modern monitoring techniques. Advances in seismic and volcanic observation technologies allow scientists to detect subtle changes in the Earth's crust, offering insights into processes that might otherwise go unnoticed. As these tools continue to improve, researchers can better predict and prepare for potential hazards ensuring that communities near these dynamic systems remain as safe as possible. What would be the potential impact if Mammoth Mountain were to erupt today? How devastating could such an eruption be? And is there a possibility that it could trigger activity in other nearby or distant volcanoes? If Mammoth Mountain were to erupt today, the scale of devastation would largely depend on the size and style of the eruption. As a rhyolitic volcano, its magma is highly viscous and gas-rich which makes explosive eruptions more likely. Such an eruption could release pyroclastic flows, fast-moving, superheated clouds of gas and ash that would devastate areas within tens of kilometers. Ashfall could cover large regions depending on wind patterns, disrupting transportation, damaging infrastructure, and affecting agriculture across hundreds of kilometers. Volcanic gases, especially carbon dioxide, which Mammoth Mountain has a history of emitting, could accumulate in low-lying areas, posing lethal risks to humans and wildlife. The nearby town of Mammoth Lakes, with its population of approximately 8,000 people, and the ski resorts in the area, would face immediate threats. An eruption during the peak tourist season could endanger thousands of lives and lead to significant economic losses. Transportation routes and utilities could also be disrupted, 
making evacuation and relief efforts challenging. Furthermore, volcanic ash in the atmosphere could force airport closures across California and Nevada, causing widespread disruptions to air travel and potentially affecting transcontinental and transpacific flight routes. On a regional scale, Mammoth Mountain's eruption could have implications for the Long Valley Caldera, a massive volcanic depression adjacent to the mountain that formed during a super eruption 760,000 years ago. While the caldera is unlikely to erupt in response, increased seismic activity and magma movement could destabilize the area. But, if Long Valley Caldera were to erupt, the consequences could be catastrophic, given its history of super eruptions and the significant geological activity beneath the surface. The immediate effects of an eruption from Long Valley Caldera would be devastating to nearby communities particularly those in the eastern Sierra region. The town of Mammoth Lakes, located only about 30 kilometers, 18 miles away, would face severe threats from pyroclastic flows, lava flows, and ashfall. Pyroclastic flows are fast-moving clouds of hot gas, ash, and rocks that can incinerate everything in their path, destroying infrastructure and vegetation. These flows could extend tens of kilometers from the caldera, depending on the eruption's size and style. The ash cloud produced by the eruption would blanket large areas of the western United States, with the potential for heavy ashfall across California, Nevada, and parts of Arizona. This could lead to severe disruption of transportation networks, including airport closures, as well as extensive damage to buildings, power lines, and agricultural crops. Ash could contaminate water supplies and pose respiratory hazards to both humans and wildlife. The Long Valley Caldera is an active geothermal area, with numerous hot springs, fumaroles, and geysers. An eruption could cause these geothermal features to intensify, posing additional risks. The sudden release of volcanic gases, including carbon dioxide and sulfur, could create dangerous conditions in low-lying areas. In extreme cases, the buildup of toxic gases could lead to lethal concentrations in valleys and towns located near the caldera. Other nearby volcanic systems, such as the Mono Inyo craters or the Coso Volcanic Field, might also be influenced, though triggering additional eruptions would depend on shared magmatic or stress connections, which are not guaranteed. If either the Mono Inyo craters or the Coso Volcanic Field were to erupt, the effects would be significant, though generally smaller in scale compared to a super eruption from the Long Valley Caldera. Both volcanic areas are active, with geothermal and seismic activity that could indicate the potential for future eruptions. The Mono Inyo craters are a series of volcanic features located to the north of Mammoth Mountain, consisting of rhyolitic domes, craters, and lava flows. The most recent eruption in the area occurred about 600 years ago, and while there has been no activity since then, the region remains seismically active and is closely monitored. If an eruption were to occur, it would likely be less explosive than an eruption from Long Valley Caldera, but still significant. The eruption could produce pyroclastic flows, lava domes, and ash clouds, primarily affecting nearby areas like the town of Mammoth Lakes and the Mono Basin. The Coso Volcanic Field is located in Eastern California, near the border with Nevada. It is a geothermal area with numerous volcanic features, including craters, lava domes, and fumaroles. While Coso has not experienced a major eruption in recent times, it remains a hotbed of geothermal activity, with the potential for future eruptions. A significant eruption at Coso could produce lava flows, pyroclastic flows, and ash clouds, threatening nearby areas like the Coso Junction and the surrounding desert region. However, given the relatively remote location of the field, it would be less likely to impact densely populated areas. Volcanoes farther afield, like those in the Cascade Range, including Mount Shasta and Lassen Peak, are unlikely to be directly affected as they operate independently from Mammoth Mountain. However, an eruption might prompt heightened monitoring of these systems as a precautionary measure. Globally, the eruption's impact would depend on its magnitude. A massive eruption, reaching a volcanic explosivity index, VEI, of 5 or higher, could inject ash and sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere, potentially causing temporary global cooling. However, such large-scale events are rare. Ash and gas emissions could still deteriorate air quality across the western United States, affecting major cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco. In a nutshell, while the eruption's effects would be primarily local, they could be severe, 
including the destruction of nearby communities, damage to infrastructure, and significant economic losses. Secondary effects could involve regional ashfall, ecological changes, and minor climatic impacts if the eruption is large enough. Although unlikely to directly trigger eruptions in other volcanic systems, it could lead to increased monitoring of neighboring and distant volcanoes, reflecting the interconnected nature of Earth's dynamic geological systems. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to like and share it with others who might find it just as fascinating. Make sure to stay updated with the latest by subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss out on future updates. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.